Making a Murderer is a documentary that covered the case of one Stephen Avery in two parts. More specifically, the two parts of his life where he was convicted of a crime and the fight to get them overturned. He was successful in one of these cases and to this day is going and fighting to try and get free from the other conviction that he feels was wrongfully obtained. But he's not working alone because next to him is a fearless lawyer who is aiming to not stop until he is free. But will she succeed? Allow us to ask, can Kathleen Zellner prove Stephen Avery's innocence? Number 7. Stephen Avery Before we get to Kathleen Zellner, we need to talk about Stephen Avery and how he landed in this whole situation. One of the key things to note here is that he is not an innocent man all the way around. Before the two major events that put him in jail for literally decades, he was found guilty of various crimes, including robbery, animal cruelty, possession of a firearm, and more. He went to jail for each of those and served his entire sentence every time. In 1985, though, everything changed. He was arrested, charged, and sentenced for the crime of assaulting a woman named Penny Bernstein. The reason he was charged with the crime was based solely on her picking him out of a lineup. The reason we bring that up was that 16 eyewitnesses and a receipt from a store noted that he was 40 minutes away from where she was assaulted at not too long after the attack happened. As such, it would be physically impossible for him to go and be the attacker, and yet, he was convicted anyway. He spent 18 years in jail as his lawyers and others tried to convince people that he didn't do the crime, but they ignored him until DNA evidence was found to prove that he did not attack her, a man named Gregory Allen did. A man who, ironically, had a strong resemblance to Avery. So the entire Wisconsin justice system was wrong and Avery sued them for it in a civil suit. But then in 2005, just a little while after getting released, he was arrested yet again. Number 6. The Case of Teresa Hallback In 2005, a woman named Teresa Hallback was murdered and Avery was arrested after blood had been found in her truck that was linked back to him. Avery wasn't the only one arrested though, as his nephew, Brendan Ray Dassey, was arrested as well and dubbed an accomplice in the entire case. From the outset, Avery claimed that not only was he innocent, but that the county was trying to set him up due to the civil suit that had been put against them by him. As the case went on, there was a lot of curious things that were going on with police and prosecution that led many to believe that this may not be as simple as the case was made out to be not least of which was that Dassey did confess to being an accomplice, but many argue, including Dassey himself, that it was a forced confession, that the police all but tricked him and suggested to him that he was guilty and needed to confess. Dassey was noted to not have the greatest mind and was very suggestible in regards to conversations, and with that came a whole slew of questions about the trial itself. As for Avery, despite the county he was suing stating that they would not be involved in the case, many officers from the county were involved in the case and some even found crucial evidence that Avery was guilty. Avery was indeed convicted of murder and other crimes and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. However, one woman has not given up in trying to prove him innocent and her name is very familiar to those who know this case in the modern day. Number 5. Kathleen Zellner Kathleen Zellner is a well-known attorney for various reasons, not least of which is that while she may be most known for now being the main defense attorney for Stephen Avery, she had done all sorts of cases against wrongly accused people and won, including winning over $90 million from wrongful conviction and medical malpractice lawsuits. That's a lot of money, wouldn't you say? So if she's on a case, She's not going to stop until she knows that the right verdict is given, and for the Stephen Avery case, that is not, in her opinion, what happened. And even though there was a verdict rendered in the case, she is still fighting to get him free, and apparently, she might be closer to getting that to happen than you think. Number 4. New Evidence 2021 has definitely been a big year for Zellner and her team. Over the last few months, Kathleen Zellner has been dropping some bombshells to fans on Twitter about her groundbreaking revelations in the case of Stephen Avery. And now, another member of the Dassey family has come forward to say evidence had supposedly been tampered with, which would obviously be a huge deal if proven to be true. 
She has accused the state of Wisconsin of withholding crucial evidence in a letter after new witnesses came forward. This follows Zellner's groundbreaking revelation earlier in the year, which places Stephen Avery's nephew, Bobby Dassey, Brendan Dassey's brother, at the scene of the crime. Since then, Brad Dassey, Brendan's half-brother, has claimed that his uncle Avery is innocent and even said that his mother, Brad's mother, tampered with evidence via a laptop before authorities were able to grab it. A new court filing on the 13th of April states that a delivery driver has come forward and said he saw Bobby with an unidentified bearded man in his 50s and 60s pushing a Toyota RAV4 onto the Avery property in the early hours of the 5th of November 2005, which was the day when Teresa was killed. That age description is a very key thing as in 2005, Avery would have only been 43. Granted, you can say a person looks one age but is another, but he was clearly stating that this was an older man and Avery was not that. Number three, the recent appeal. In February 2019, Avery won a motion to appeal in a Wisconsin circuit court, which meant that the court would re-examine the case. Zellner's appeal argued that the bones discovered in the gravel pit on the Avery property, believed to be hallbacks, had been mishandled by authorities when they were given to the victim's family in 2011 without notifying the defense. In August 2019, the defense's bid for a new trial was rejected in the circuit court, meaning Zellner and her team had to continue to pursue their appeal in Wisconsin's appellate court. Unlike the circuit district court, an appellate court does not retry cases, hear witness statements, see new evidence, or even have a jury. Instead, the appellate court reviews the procedures and decisions made in the original case to ensure the legal proceedings were fair and the law was applied correctly. It's progress though, and that's what many, including Zellner, are wanting. Number two, what happens if he's proven innocent? So let's fast forward to the big question here. What happens if Zellner is able to prove that there was mishandled, misplaced, or withheld evidence from the case and that Avery indeed was not the person who killed Teresa? What would happen then? Well, outside of the obvious release of Stephen Avery and potentially his nephew Brendan, Zellner would go and launch a massive civil suit to go and get restitutions paid to Avery for all the pain he has been through. Because even if he gets released this year, he'll have been in jail for decades due to a false conviction, a second false conviction no less, and he'll want to not just sue the county, but potentially the whole state for what they did. And not unlike what making a murderer wanted, it's going to question the process of getting justice in court. Because if an innocent man can be accused and charged and sentenced to two different crimes that he didn't commit and the authorities and prosecution ignored or mishandled evidence in order to use it against that innocent man, yeah, that would cause a national scandal. Number 1. Finishing the Fight more than anything though, Zellner is aiming to finish the job and prove her client is innocent. It might take more time, it might take a lot more appeals, but she is clearly bent on proving her case. And that is to be admired to an extent, because if she didn't fully believe in Avery's innocence, she wouldn't be pushing this hard. And that's why this story about Avery continues, because she's making sure it continues and won't stop until she's forced to or Avery is free. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at Kathleen Zellner and how she is going all out to try and prove Stephen Avery innocent despite odds that are massively stacked against her? Do you think that she's doing this simply because she believes in his innocence or do you think there's another motive for what she's doing? Do you think she'll be able to accomplish her goal? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.